Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Ben the Human Plays Vagris the Riven Realms. We're ready to take our team up the valley in search of Scornar's cousin. I don't remember his name. We can only take five people. Hmm. All right. The usual suspects. And then who's our fifth going to be? I kind of want to take Harvick instead of Elani, because Harvick can kind of move around. Elani's kind of a two-trick pony. And if she gets shoved to the back, she's not nearly as useful. So I think these five are my preferred for now. You take your companions into the crevice and begin to make long, make slow progress along the valley floor. It is about a dozen feet wide, and its walls rising almost vertically on both sides. Even through the rock, even though the rock faces are high to begin with, the farther you go, the more they keep going up and up toward the mere slit of visible sky. The valley looks to have come from fa about fairly recently, perhaps cracked open during an earthquake, or perhaps it was formed when the dragon lords elevated their new land a couple of centuries ago. I did not know they did that. In a few minutes, you're walking in the dis in the darkness due to the depth of the valley, and the silence around you becomes almost oppressive. Not even your footfalls can be heard clearly on the rocky ground, which is concerning, or disconcerting to say the least. It is as if the walls swallowed up sound instead of producing echoes. Instead, it is even darker as the valley floor descends into the earth. Let's use magic to try and scry our surroundings. Magical scrying reveals that a stagnant, foul sort of necromancy is rampant here. Well, okay. <laughs> As if unleashed by unseen spectral hands long ago. It coalesces into an almost vicious darkness at the heart of the valley. Oh man, are we going to have to fight undead? Should I go get... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, should I go back and get the, the binding, the blessing of unbinding? I think I should. Because I have the opportunity to leave. All right, I'm pa quick, quick pause here. I'm gonna run back to somewhere that can give me the blessing of our school, and I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right, we're back. I had to go all the way back to Torzeg Shelter to get the blessing of unbinding because uh, the Dragonlands don't ascribe to that nonsense, I guess. We've used magic again. I don't know if it matters, but just in case. Press onward. Now, we will climb down the stairs. Uh, oh, I didn't read about this. <laughs> Walking in deepening darkness and almost utter silence, you and your companions walk along the valley floor until you reach a vast chasm. The movements of the earth have uncovered its foul black bowels, and below you can see that a set of stairs were revealed descending down into the rock face on the left. The continuation of the stairs is on the right, leading up into the wall across, but ending abruptly in a collapse a few feet in. It is not difficult to climb down to the stairs on the left using ropes, and seeing how they descend into the rock, it is either that or turning back, for the chasm in front of you blocks any progress further down the valley. We will climb the stairs now. The darkness and silence are even more oppressing down in the stairwell than when they were in the valley. Scornar produces the first torch and gives, you, gives it to you once it is lit. What a terrible hole in the ground to be crawling into, he comments, his voice almost com completely lost in the strange air reeking of grave mold. The flame is barely giving any visibility, its light seemingly drank up by the inky darkness. Scornar steps forward and something crunches under his boot. Looking down, you see that bones are lying all over the steps, stripped of flesh but too fresh to be from the tomb. Not the best of omens, I. Scornar grunts but presses on. Descend the stairs. Oh, we got a choice. The stairs keep descending steadily for a long while before leveling out. Even then, you follow the roughly hewn corridor straight on for quite a while before running into a T-junction. However, the, passage here, the passages here are no longer carved crudely out of dark rock, but instead have been smoothed out with some unknown means to be perfectly flat, jet black surfaces. It looks seamless, going in both new directions in both new directions. A set of strange, twisting, alien-looking decorations covers the wall at the junction, at the center of which is an onyx plaque displaying cuneiform writing that looks equally unfamiliar. I guess there's not really anything to tell us to go one direction or the other, so let's go right. The corridor takes a sharp turn to the left after a while, and you tr trudge along it in the inky darkness, pressed together by the smooth walls. Occasionally, ser series of twisting shapes decorate 
sections, but otherwise there is nothing of interest until suddenly a terrible sensation hits you. Threatening to overwhelm you in moments, it feels like uncontrollable terror and a sharp headache emerged into a powerful infusion. You can see that your companions are struggling equally. Are you strong enough to beat it? It's better if we are Kalani. Interesting. Tough and strong-minded. Good God, we have a, a lot of strong-minded. We did. Your mind banishes the unnatural terror and utter fear. Seeing this, your companions break free of it one by one, too. The sensation is gone and the corridor stretches on ahead. Relieved, you press on. The corridor takes a sharp turn left and continues until a larger one opens from it on the right. That path has arches at intervals and more of the twisting decoration. You are sure that the passage ahead would lead back to the T-junction, and since Scornar doesn't want to linger here, you turn right, walking down the wide corridor. The passage leads you to a great hall through a massive archway. It is difficult to assess the size of the chamber due to the darkness that grips it, but it must go on for dozens of feet ahead. Burial shelves lie the line the sides and bones cover the ground in a thick layer very old ones disturbed by tomb robbers as well as some dried corpses probably belonging to the same pillagers there scornar croaks in a few feet and walks a few feet to reach a dead body clad in crimson armor there are others like it lying about they look as if something has drawn out all of the humidity from their flesh there's a mummy in here before you could investigate them more thoroughly, a hideous cackle sounds like the cracking of bone engulfs the chamber. <laughs> it comes from a large broken black stone that is visible at the end of the hall now that you have come further inside. You watch in horror as several ghoulish forms begin to rise at the edge of the meager light emanating from the torches skeletal skeletal remains puppeteered by some ancient unspeakable sorcery or curse rattling maddenly Maddingly, maddeningly, I can talk. They stumble forward to fight you at your at the command of their warlord. You must fight to survive this. Are you ghosts? Revenant. They got a lot of armor. And you are a bone walker. You got a little armor. Okay, Scornar is very important. I would like... Whoops. Or not Scornar, Gorgoro is very important. Uh, Harvick, you hang out in the front here, and I'm actually going to have Kreeft over here, and then um, Harvick can just bounce back and forth at his, his own whim. Alright, Kreeft, you and Harvick team up on this guy, because Kreeft can do... I should have put him at the back, I'm realizing. Kreeft can do some armor penetration. This is also armor piercing, and it knocks him back in initiative next time. So maybe we'll have more of a chance to uh, to knock him out. I don't know if you can stun skeletons. Oh, he's alive, but barely. All right, break this guy's armor, and this guy's going to swing. He missed me. Bone scythe. That sounds ominous. Get a crit, please. Not quite. Not even close, really. Jump forward and stab. Why don't you finish this guy off? Ah, the crit for nine is, is really good, but... Let's break this guy's armor, because I have a feeling he's going to be around for a while. Stack up the fireballs. Owie! Unliving stab. How rude. Axe the big bone. Guy's going to move. And then, I, and then I did get bone side this time. Harvick, I would love for you to finish this dude off, but I think he's got too much armor. So kick him to the back, because he'll just move forward then. Yep. And then let's try that with this guy, too. Good, 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 good. Okay. Try to burn him to death. All right, he's gone. Break this guy's armor. Haha, -ha, suck it. Crit for eight is fantastic. He's gone. I guess we'll throw a knife at him for one. And now, why don't we try to to tank up a bit and then throw a ward under this dude? You missed me. Oh, I apparently I have to be hit in order for that to work. Now we'll do the Gorgoro Harvick dance. Oh, well, I guess not quite a dance. A singular move. You watch in horror as that 
In, in horror that new undead rise just as you have displaced the previous ones. The dry malevolent cackle from before sweeps over the chamber again. <laughs> you can see that, that with it, a spectral figure emerges from beyond the cracked stone slab at the back of the chamber. It looks like an ancient corpse, but partly ethereal, with ghastly light emanating from its ribcage. To your utter surprise and dread, the thing begins to speak. The words are foreign, but you can feel their meaning. It curses you for its defeat and consequent suffering, but mostly for you being alive while it is bound to its eternal torment. With this last malicious word, it waves a ghostly hand in the undead rattle forward. Face the horror. Ah, here, here it is. Cathover oh, it's the guy! Cathoverus. The dude whose tomb this is. Alright, more of these sword boys. So, keep that in mind. A good strategy is to knock them to the back row because they can't do anything back there. Alright, let's try and kill this guy on the right. I should have gone for the guy on the left, I realize now. Now I'm splitting damage, which is not good. Let's try to stack up as much damage as we can and try to burn him to death. It did work. I got slashed. That's okay. There are worse things to happen. What are you gonna do? He's decayed me. With penetration. Rude. Alright, he swapped places. Let's... Uh, well, I guess kicking this guy probably doesn't help all that much. So let's try to throw a dagger at him. Haha, -ha, suck it. I was going to say, try to throw a dagger at him because that'll at least um, knock him back in initiative, but we didn't hit him anyway. Ooh, boy. The Grave Slash is a little dangerous, huh? Ooh, crit for seven is great, though. Yes, one more down. And he's moved forward. Try to hit these two. Fantastic news. Look out for the bone scythe. Ah, the block is a little tricky. Ah, we're we getting de decayed all over the place here. We're doing okay. I would love to start culling some more of these these skellingtons. Another one gone. Also gone. Let's throw a ward under him. I don't know if he'll move to the front row, though. He seems like a back row guy, though. Honestly. I don't know if I can kick this guy. He's absolutely enormous. Hey, it worked! Stop penetrating my sorcerer! <laughs> oh, nice job, Gorgoro! I think that'll kill him this turn. So everybody turn your attention to the Bone Walker. And instead of putting a ward down, I'll just throw a fireball at him, because he's going to come forward anyway. Anywhere I would have put the ward, he would have just avoided it, so. Knock him back in initiative. We should be able to kill him before he gets to do anything. Sure did. Good job, team. With the last imbued attack against its half-ethereal form, the malevolent specter dematerializes with a shriek. Eee! <laughs> Banished back to the shadowy realm whence it came. The undead are piles of bones and armor scraps once again, while the inky darkness and odd silence have disappeared completely. And yet a strong malicious presence can still be felt emanating from behind the black stone at, at the far end. They weren't as lucky as us, or as good, Scornar says as he crouches to search one of the corpses clad in crimson dragon steel armor. He shakes his head and then moves on to another corpse. The fourth is Surtur, the largest of the desiccated corpses. He must have been a giant of a man. So this is where your tale came to an end, brother, the old warrior whispers with a kind smile. But then he narrows his eyes and pries something out of Surtur's clenched fist that was held at his chest. It is a rune carved into a flat stone. A rune to protect against malign magic, Scornar says, and then points to the signs of battle and chaos all around. The dark spirit must have cursed them, and some fled while the rest perished. Perhaps Kartan survived and fled? None of the others here are him. Further search indeed reveals no sign of Kartan. While you gather the dragon steel and other valuables from the dead, Scornar sings a sad dirge while kneeling beside his perished cousin. The armors are corroded somehow, but smelted down. They could, they would still be worth a fortune. Once you are done, Scornar rises and prepares to haul the corpse out of the tomb. Ooh, did we get a crap ton of dragon seal? Maybe I don't even have to buy it. Let's get the F out of this miserable tomb, shall we? Take what you can from here and leave the tomb. Insist on breaking the slab to find out what is beyond it. 
I am tempted. I don't think that's a good idea, my friend. Scornar shakes his head. Far be it for me to tell you how to lead. Nor am I a coward, but you know this. But, you know this, but this place has already claimed someone dear to me, and we've seen what it is, what is sealed beyond that rock. Your other companions look fairly unsure about the plan, too. Oh, is this gonna kill me? We gotta see. Scornar groans when you lunge forward and break the I did it <laughs> on my own. I'm a beast Break the onyx slab into pieces with a single powerful kick as you do the black smoke escapes and dissipates But not before engulfing you all turning the air very cold in the chamber Cursing you peer inside and see a set of roughly hewn stairs descending into the unknown You descend and your companions follow you begrudgingly at the foot of the staircase is a circular chamber with strange with a strangely low ceiling at the, at its center is an open stone sarcophagus containing a mummified body wearing scraps of ancient armor it can be none other than Cathavras himself the malevolent presence here is making you he your head spin and slowly drains the strength out of your muscles yet you can see that your gambit has paid off there is so much gold and silver in the chamber that you have a hard time hauling all of it out of the tomb you pack up everything you can and light the mummy on fire using one of the torches for good measure yet it burns with a sickly flame and turns into a pile of oily goo at long last your team departs Holy God. Did we get cursed? <laughs> I don't know. That's a lot of money. We got, and look at all the crap we got. You leave the tomb behind and ascend the, the valley. The going is ponderous, for Scornar has to haul his cousin's corpse, and all of you feel strangely drained from the ordeal in the dark bowels of the earth. In the end, you make it out of the valley and right back to the Comitatus, where your crew hails you. So much of the day has passed while you want you were under the mountainous expanse that is almost sundown now. Scornar tells you that he has to build a pyre and burn the remains of Surtur. It's not something my people do often, but because of the chance of a curse, I'd rather see to it he is cleansed by flame, he concludes. Makes sense to me. Once the funeral pyre is built from local bramble and firewood from your stockpile, Surtur is placed on it gently by Scornar, who keeps singing the same slow, solemn dirge in his native tongue that you have heard him recount before. He places the runestone on his cousin's forehead as part of the ceremony. The heralds will take him to the god's mighty hall now. He fell in battle, and regardless of how horrid it was, he'll feast with the greatest in the afterlife. Scornar tells you as you watch the flames burn high, quickly turning Surtur's shriveled body into ash. When it is done and only embers remain, the old warrior draws you aside. The more I think about it, the more it seems clear to me that Kjartan must have escaped the nightmare of the tomb somehow. He tells you once you sit down on some rocks near the pyre. He was no dragon guard, so they didn't drag him back, and our sources did not mention prisoners. If he fled, he was afflicted by the curse because we know Surtur's group could not banish Cathavras. In such a case, my people tend to look for healers of spirit and flesh, wise men, sages, apothecaries, priests, shamans, the usual lot. I'm almost certain that Kjartan did the same if the Wasteland hadn't taken him first, but I have no idea where to look, my friend. I won't give up, though. I'll keep my eyes and ears open, and I'll ask you to do the same. You tell him that you will. Thank you, for everything. One that aids another in the search of family is indeed a worthy companion. He smiles and rises, just as, just as the sun's last rays vanish into the approaching dark blue of the evening. By then the Comitatus has prepared the camp for the night. Well, well, well. That went really well. <laughs> uh, we don't have any healing supplies. I should probably get some, honestly. Everybody did a good job healing on their own. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You wake in the middle of the night. Something is wrong. You are shivering in the darkness of your tent. Your head spinning, the twilight swirling around you like a great silent maelstrom. To your shock, you are unable to speak. Eventually, you stumble out of your tent and look around. The camp is eerily quiet. Uh-oh. Too, too quiet, perhaps. Most of the crew is asleep, but those that are awake seem not to notice you. Not even when you step close to them. Their campfire is snuffed out and smell of corpses, but they do not seem to mind or realize that either. Then you see it. Something is standing at the edge of camp. Something terrifying. A mere shadow of a man in ancient armor with eyes burning with cold light. You ask the crew in a croaking voice what it is, but they do not hear you. Scornar steps to your side, looking pale and transparent somehow. As he looks at you with unspeakable Unspeakable grief and sadness. 
you realize what happened. Kartan may have been cursed and fled, but he never went right into the heart of Cathavarus's darkness. You did. And now are you becoming like the terrible ancient warlord, an ethereal nightmare to tor torment the living. Did we just die? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh. Uh, well, don't go into the tomb, team. No wonder they gave me so much treasure. It's like, you'll never be able to enjoy this. All right, I'm going to quickly reload after being destroyed and cursed by Kath of Ross. I'll pick up right after, after we leave. So we'll, we'll pick up right there. Hold on just a second. All right, we're back. I've gone through the whole battle again because I had I hadn't saved since uh, since the last time we camped. So take what you can from here and leave the tomb. This time we only got some dragon steel scraps, simple jewelry, and exquisite weapons. You leave the tomb behind. I think this is all the same as when uh, when we left after breaking open the thing. Uh, now we must go find his other cousin, Carton, who fled. Gained loyalty, and now this time we haven't been cursed, thank god. I don't think. Man. <laughs> I guess I guess you don't mess with with uh ghosts in their 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 cursed tomb, huh? Now, I do remember we were supposed to go there was a thing for Harvick in the Mines of Plenty that I like totally spaced on. The last time we, the last episode that we recorded together. So let's end that. And then in we go. Inspect, show them our trade license. Now, what, what do we have? We do have dragon steel. Thank God. All right. Definitely want to hold on to one of those for the time being. Let's get some more supplies. Now. We're going to be going back to Torzag's, so we can take this. We do want to go to Lumen, because we have crystals to get. We're in good graces with R Rotharnak now, so we could buy dragon steel if we wanted to. Um, but I don't think I really want to, or really have a reason to. So here we go. So Harvick wants to talk to you in private. The tainted mercenary and you sit down at a secluded table. He explains that some miners he drank with confirm that a man from his hit list is indeed close to this town. A fellow in question is a foreman at a mining venture funded by the Loader's Guild, although according to Harvick, only in name. These positions are typically held by collegium members to give them legality. In any case, he could deal with this issue alone, but asks you wait for him. It'll take me a night to do the deed, boss, he tells you. Allow Harvet to take care of it. This will end the current day. Insist on going with him? Yeah, I'll go. Who am I, deny, to, who am I to deny you, boss? He says, pats you on the arm and tells you that you can set out immediately to the mines nearby. You leave in a timely fashion. Head off to the mine to find Harvick's target. He tells you to bring only one more, if anyone at all. We bring Kreefta. Are you... Oh, damn. He's in not great shape. <laughs> this is probably not going to go well. Uh, let's bring Kreefta. She's really good at this kind of thing. Bribe the guards and try to sneak in to sabotage the tunnels. Okay, we should read about what we're actually doing. After leaving the town proper behind, you spend several hours searching for the right mine, which you eventually locate tucked away in a valley north of the settlement. According to Harvick, this area has long been depleted of ore, but apparently surveyors have found new veins recently, and the Loader's Guild bought up the rights on the quiet. Once you make it to the mine, you spend some time staking it out. There are only a handful of guards going outside. Guards outside. Harvick suggests that making the hit look like an accident by collapsing a tunnel on the foreman and wonders how to go about it. Oh, if we'd brought Nadir, we could do this. Con the guards into leaving their posts? We don't have enough con. We could try to bribe them or sneak in without getting rid of the guards. We have a very high chance of success. But this one seems like a guaranteed chance of success. So let's do that one. Because we have plenty of money. Your plan works splendidly, and you infiltrate the tunnels with Harvick once the guards are out of the picture. And once in, you try to locate the target. Once you locate the foreman, a huge bearded orc in one of the tunnels, it is only a question of figuring out how to collapse it on him to bury the man. Engineering, savvy, perceptive. 
It'd be better if we had Garrick. We succeeded, thank God. You find the right post to break, and before anyone could react, the tunnel collapses on the foreman, but avoids the miners themselves. As they busy themselves clearing out the debris, you make yourselves scarce, with no one the wiser. Once you are far away from the mine, Harvick and you sit down for a brief rest, and he offers you some booze that he has in his canteen. Thanks for doing this with me, boss, he says, grinning. Few people comprehend how important it is for me to get back at him. Much appreciated. You head back to the mines of plenty, and he gained loyalty. Sick. That was easy as heck. I thought we were going to have to fight a guy. Thank God it didn't matter that he was hurt. <laughs> uh, let's get two more fighters. How is our beast situation? We already grabbed all the stuff we need. Passengers? Oh, p two people going to Torzag? Sure, sure. Come along. We only have four days worth of supplies. So we should probably get going and head to the Crimson Gate and then go to Torres Eggs immediately. Push on and pray. Use the next outcropping as shelter. We've succeeded and we lost our movement. We only lost 16 supplies though. All right, into the gate. I've also determined that it, there is, if because I'm always running at 999 of of all my main stats it's actually beneficial to do forced marching periodically because it takes some of your stamina obedience and morale away but if you're always at maximum of everything you might as well use it right i'll show you how that works as we go i don't have any information um i'll show you that that as we go back to towards egg shelter here so let's get well let's see do you guys have any missions for me Particularly Torzeg Shelter or Lumen. Hey, there's some. Ratharnak! We're gonna be good buddies. We need more. Let's buy the two beasts. Now we need more. Oh, that's right. They don't do slaves in the Dragonlands. We'll just get a couple extra workers and then we'll swap them out. <laughs> swap them out later. Uh, this one. And then we'll buy some extra food. Max out the food. All right, 10 days should be plenty to get us back to Torres Egg Shelter, especially if we're forced marching. Yes. Okay. Any uh, any rewards here? There are from the Skithicness. Scrying Orb. I don't think I'll use that, but... Although, scouting chance. Maybe, if, maybe we can make use of scouting. Oh, hell yeah. All resistances to companions? Sure. Neat. All right, we still have five movements, so we should make use of it today. Onward. And and uh, we should start the forced marching. So basically, what you do is, because we have full nines, you forced march as far as you can, rest, and you see how your stuff has, has reduced. What you want to do is max guard. And then you just work on the same way as if we had lost some morale from any kind of like natural phenomena or a battle or something like that. You just slowly rebuild your your morale and obedience and stuff by fully guarding. So we'll just fully guard until we get back to 9-9 on obedience and morale and then we'll, we'll not guard to get some vigor back. And, and then once you have ba you're back to full nines again, you can uh, force march again. It's actually pretty nice. I'm kind of surprised I didn't even think about doing that before. It was just like, in my head, force marching was something for emergencies. <laughs> Let's visit Buka. Have a blessing. We will ask about the rumors and then trade. Got a common jewel. Buka, did you hear about how I had, like, all the treasure in the world in my hands, but then I got cursed by an evil spirit, and then that never happened? Yeah, I, I definitely heard about that, too. Oh, we're, ba we're back to full, full stuff, so we should uh, force march again. Basically, you can get, like, a couple of free days, uh, when, especially when you're traveling on the roads. And we have the thing that, like, lets us randomly generate vigor. And, and if you can just, like, get a couple of those, luckily, it's it's pretty slick. Nothing to hide. Show them our license. Drop off the two people. Drop off all of our missions. This one's for Lumen, so we won't mess around with that. 
And then, uh, I guess we should see if there's anything for Lumen. Lots of stuff for Lumen. So much stuff I can't carry it all. I suppose... Seven days? How far is Lumen from here? Yeah, it's like right at the edge of what we can do. We should get another beast. Uh, fire the, the workers we hired. Buy all the slaves. As long as we don't have... Crowded camps, we don't, thankfully. And then uh, we should uh, get that other Lumen one. Yeah! Look at that! We have five things to take to Lumen. No payment. Oh, it's because of give up. I always get, I always get that con confused when I look at the active mission and it's like, you won't get any money. It's like, no, that's only if I give up. I understand. Okay. So, before we leave, let's go visit... Is it the Undercity? It's not the Undercity, but I wanted to buy some medical supplies from that guy. It's the, uh... Civic District? Where is... Scornar's guy? There we go. I was like, where's or Gorgoro's friend? There we go. Some free loyalty for Gorgoro. And now, actually, I'm gonna pause the episode there and we'll pick up here next time because I want to go back to the Best Yaris Arena and fight some more in there. So, if you guys enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps me out a lot. If you want to see more Vagris, the Riven Realms, or the other videos I have going on on the channel, subscribe to the channel. That also helps me out a lot. But until next time, everybody, I hope you have a good one and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, everybody.